Redefine your expectations. Take a good look at what stresses you out. Does it drive you nuts when the carpet needs to be vacuumed? Or is it a sink full of dishes that really rattles your nerves? At work, does not getting tasks completed really bother you? Or is it a disorganized workspace that causes you stress? Look at this slide. List the top four things at work and at home that make you feel stressed. Once you've defined your priorities, ask yourself if it's worth getting stressed out over those things. Sure, a sink full of dirty dishes might be a health hazard, but I doubt you would lose your job over a few disorganized papers on your desk. However, if having an organized desk is really important to you and reduces your stress level and makes you feel good, then make it a priority. Look at the list you just made. Assign each stress item from work a number from 1 to 4, where 1 is the most important and 4 is the least important. Repeat the process for the items from home. Now that you know what's important to you, you can start to plan. First, let's start with getting organized at work. If you think you don't have time to plan, trust us, you don't have time not to. Let's look at a few things you can do to make your time at work productive and less stressful. Organize your workspace. Keep your desk organized. Use file folders, baskets, or containers. Whatever you need to do to keep things neat. It can also be helpful to group like items together. Electronic organization. Don't forget, your workplace should extend to your computer too. Make sure your electronic files mirror your hard copies and that you have a way of keeping things organized. Don't just throw everything onto the desktop or into My Documents. It's also important to keep your email organized too. Email can be a great tool, but it can also negatively affect productivity. Set your email program to only check your email once every hour. Sometimes management experts even suggest dealing with email only once or twice a day. Prioritize your tasks. My favorite, most stress-reducing tool is a notebook. Every day, before I leave work, I make a list of the tasks I need to accomplish the next day. Then, the next morning, I come in, review my email, and add tasks to the list, if necessary. Finally, I highlight the top three items and focus on those during the day. At the end of the day, I start a new list for the next day and transfer any uncompleted items to that list. It's simple, it's easy, and it provides documentation if I need it. Next, getting organized at home. Having a well-run household can help reduce stress and worry at home. So, start with budgets. Finances are a common cause of stress. Not having enough money to pay the bills can wreak havoc on an individual and a family. Plus, finances can limit recreational activities, which reduces your ways to relieve stress. Talk about a vicious cycle. At the beginning of every month, sit down with yourself and your spouse if you have one and create a budget. You can use a piece of paper and a calculator, a spreadsheet program, or a personal accounting package, whatever works for you. Make sure you account for the necessities like mortgage or rent, car payments, debt payments, heat, light, groceries, and gas. Don't forget to budget for some fun stuff too even if it's only $20. Savings are another important part of your budget. If your car breaks down and you're stuck with a repair bill, it can be less stressful to take it out of the savings account than to put it on a credit card. If you find yourself struggling to make ends meet, talk to a debt counselor to help reduce your financial stresses. If you have an extremely high-end or low-end lifestyle, consider whether you can make changes to reduce your stress level. Spending tons of time and or money on maintaining expensive cars, homes, and boats may not be wise if it's causing you stress. Likewise, pinching every penny when it's not necessary might not be worth it. Next, look at chores. Another common issue is deciding who does what chores. You need to have some form of organization, whether it's an unwritten but agreed upon rule, a chore chart, or a chore jar. It can also be helpful to identify who wants to do what. We all have chores that we don't mind doing and chores that we hate. So if you can find some overlap, life will be easier for everyone. Another option, particularly if you live alone or have a small family, is to hire out some of the chores 
such as mowing the lawn. Just make sure you're not causing yourself financial stress. Then, meals. Sitting down on the weekend and planning your meals for the next week and then going grocery shopping with a list accomplishes several things. During the week, you don't have to worry about what to cook or if you have the supplies in the house. When you get home from work, you shouldn't have to rush back out to the grocery store. You will be more likely to eat healthy food and less likely to stop at your local restaurant. Cooking at home is better for your wallet and your waistline. Sitting down as a family and eating supper together is a great activity. Keep frozen pizzas on hand for emergencies and allow yourself takeout once every week or two. Then, look at your list of home stressors that you created earlier. Ask yourself what tools can you use to start managing those stressors.